Hi, everybody. I'm Rick DiClemente. This is Astrology Unplugged, episode 351. Where did all the time go? Seven years of this. I still can't get rid of you. <laughs> After seven years. Tonight's going to be an intriguing subject, I think. Um, I've been talking a lot. I wanted to keep in, in theme with what we've been doing the last month or so. And, and the thing we've been talking about is dumping your stuff or getting rid of your emotional blockages and freeing yourself. And then when I started to entertain it for this week, it really blossomed into many different sub sub subjects. Try to say that into several different sub subjects. And anyhow, um, we're going to talk about it in several different ways. There, There's more to it than just getting rid of your stuff so they can move on towards enlightenment. That's one way to do it. But there are many others that we're going to discuss. So I'm going to keep trying to come back to that central subject. Um, I had gone through A Course in Miracles like uh, Teresa through their What's the course called? It's a course for teachers. No, you're you're muted, dear. Total transformation. Yeah, the course. total tra TTC, total transformation course. But anyhow, at the heart of that course are seven principles that Jesus gave to Nook. Um and the, their course is based upon these seven principles that are necessary for enlightenment. Um, and you could use those for today. I decided not to, but those seven are, uh, one was willingness, always being willing. One of the reasons I stayed away from them is I don't do really well with people telling me what instructions I have, I have to follow. So keeping that in mind, Number two is accountability, always being accountable for yourself. These are very strict, by the way. Number three was, I really like number three, becoming defenseless, not defending yourself. Boy, is that hard. When something happens, you start to, well, I'm and you, no, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't defend yourself. That's a tough one. Well, they all are. Number four was vulnerability, which I really thought was excellent. And um, getting allowing yourself to be emotionally vulnerable, not the other way around. Um, and five is really excellent. Radical self-honesty. Radical self-honesty, which means radical. Totally. <laughs> and that... Uh, it's a tough one also. Uh, number six, there all are. Six is uh, trust. That's a spot that we all, I think, have to work at. as an easy one. And number seven was really a good one. Uh, the final one is gratitude. So I started to channel this discussion through those seven principles. And I just said, nah. I don't know, something in me just said, now, nah. And I realized very quickly that I can teach you through the seven, through the 12 houses. I can teach you about this through the 12 houses. And I think it's pretty intriguing and it keeps us more in line with an astrology show. So we're going to do that along with some other things. Now, what am I talking about dumping your junk? I remember a time in my life, I don't know. We talked about Pluto last week, and we talked about getting to a point in your life, we don't all get there, many of us do at certain periods, where you just got to break from things. You just have to have sweeping changes. Sweeping changes is the only thing that's going to work in your life. And that's what you could see in America right now. Everybody's doing this right now, looking at each other. They don't know what the heck to do, but sweeping changes are what's necessary. That's what dumping your stuff is about. And I got to a point in my life one time 
where I just dumped everything. I just was, I didn't hate the people I was with, but I was tired of being with them. I hated the lifestyle. I just wanted to dump everything. And I just dumped, I don't know what else to call it. I just put aside all the things I've been doing, didn't know where I was going to go. And I went off into some other direction, nevertheless. And the next day was remarkable. And that's how this works. And I'm going to really pinpoint this strongly. The next day was a huge turning point in my life. And it was significant of getting the junk out of the way, taking a clog out of the drain. Then the drain starts to flow freely. So it was really remarkable. Um, and um, when, I, when I talk about this, I'm going to relate it a lot back to astrology. Because what astrology is really trying to do, uh, I wrote down this phrase here lately. Um, oh, he went through some really rather rough planets. Oh, she's really got some rather rough planets on her right now. We hear all the time in the magazines, oh, it's a tough time for Taurus. Oh, they're going through a rough time in Gemini. Well, why? You see some planets up there going, oh, let's give it. Let's give it to the Geminis now. They have it too easy. Let's lay it on. Is that how it works? No. We're being ridiculous about it. So it requires us to think. To think about this. What does it mean? He's going through a rough time. Oh, she had rough planets back then. What it means, in my opinion, after studying this a long time, what it means is your innards, I don't know what you're going to call them. Rick likes to call them the soul. And I don't call it the soul because I don't understand what the hell the soul is. But we're just going to let Rick have his soul and I will do my soul list. <laughs> um, it's not that I disagree with him. I just don't know what it is. And I'm perfectly okay with what he calls. Um, then we start calling soul brother. And we start calling these other terms. But um, there, there, there comes a time when your inner self just says, we got to stop doing this. We got to stop seeing this person. Got to stop hanging out with these people. Got to stop going to these kinds of shows. Stop listening to this type of stuff. I don't know what your particular issue is, but that's what I'm talking about. And as soon as you do, everything lightens up. And it's incredible if you watch. And that's one reason I'm going to harp on you. I want you to start seeing and seeing people near you that have these magnificent magnificent experiences, either positive or negative, and find out what happened the day before. And start making a list for yourself. When you have these good and bad, what did you do the day before, the week before, the month before, that had to do with moving this block in place, moving the block out of the way? In, in the Course of Miracles, they call it very clearly, finding and identifying the blockages that you have in your life that keeps your heart from oneness with God. They have different ways of putting it. Finding and identifying your blockages and getting past them. Okay, and that's really what it's all about. Now, We'll go through it once around the circle in astrology, and that will help you to understand how these blockages can be uh, many different styles and types. When you talk about the first house in astrology, you're talking about the Aryan house. It's very much about the self, the first house. And you can immediately see what the problem is with the first house. If you have a nice, healthy first house, then you have a nice, healthy 
personality. You are around people. You're easy. They like you. You like them. Everything's easy. But it's like with all the houses. If you're too hung up on it, too much of it, you're going to have problems. And nobody wants to hear about you all the time. It's not about you all the time. Sometimes it's about us. Sometimes about us. So that's the problem with the first house. Is Aries and the first house people are enamored with themselves. And sometimes it can just go too far. And, and you're just not going to get very far until you start doing the opposite. And opposite Aries is Libra. And Libra is us. Aries is me. Libra is us. So that's what that basic principle is here. And you'll, you'll find and you'll notice in these shows that I always try to re return to the basics. I just happen to think that it's all rather basic. Second house, Taurus house. House of finances, stuff, values, things. I have. Taurus is about my stuff. Oftentimes, what do I own? What do I think I own? What are my stuff? What is my self-worth? It's really about self-worth. Well, this is really powerful in astrology. And I'm sure in all fields of psychology, if you don't have self-worth, you're going to have trouble. I don't care how you talk about it. If you don't have, if you think that you're worthless, hold on, I gotta check this this list here. I'm getting some sound. Okay. Hold on one moment. There it was. Okay. Now, so likewise, the opposite of Taurus is Scorpio. Scorpio is about my stuff plus your stuff. And in the long run, Scorpio is about combining our stuff, which is really the ultimate. It's beautiful if it's done right. So it's about my stuff isn't worth fairly much until I combine it with your stuff. So the Zodiac is, as we say, exquisite. Third house, third sign. Third house is a lot like Gemini. Gemini is about the mind in a rather simple uh, way, in a local mind, uh, chit-chatting with people, talking small talk with people, just the ability itself to talk, to express yourself, to write, to communicate. Well, you know, it's a really powerful stage, the third house. Where we learn to talk, we learn to express ourselves, but do we learn to stop talking? This can often be the case. I'm sure a lot of people know what I mean, where sometimes you get trapped by people. It doesn't matter if they're Gemini or not. A person with a lot of third house energy can just yak, 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 and you can't stop, and you can't think. You can't get a word in, and that's not dealing with life. That's not liveliness. That's running away from life. That's what that's about. Keeping life at the door. I don't want to deal with it. I'll just block it all with words. So that's where it's a block there. Okay. So as you can see with all these, you need to blend by blending with the opposite sign. That's how you mainly get out of your stuckness in your particular sign. The fourth house, and some of these are much worse than others. The fourth house or cancer house is very, very important because it's the first time in the zodiac where you take emotion seriously. The first three signs have other things to do. The fourth sign, cancer, is where emotion is taken seriously. Well, that's good and you need to do it and you need to learn how to be emotional and to be healthy emotional 
But if everything is about your emotions and nobody else's, guess how tired that gets? I don't have to say much more. Your emotions are important, Miss Ann Landers, Miss Dear Abby, but so are other people's emotions. So you see, the zodiac is really made up of six signs that have to do with myself and the other six have to do with me plus others. Okay. So cancer is the tough, the tough, tough turning point because as Liza says, they take the soul and they throw it in the water and the soul has never learned to swim before. That's a tough stage. So you learn to swim by hanging on, then swim, then hang on, then swim. So we learn through all these stages how to dump our stuff. And cancer can be a sign with a lot of stuff because they end up, a lot of times, they end up with more stuff than they need to. They think they need. They think they need buffered. They think they need safety. And a lot of times, if they just calm down a minute, they're safer than they think and they're stronger than they think. So cancer can be a tough sign in that way. Every sign's got them. The Leo stage, the fifth, the fifth house. The fifth house is children, expression, expressing myself. I express myself. So the fifth house is very important for learning to have confidence in yourself, to express yourself, to feel good about it, get up on stage and talk and not be nervous. It's not an easy thing for some people. Some people, it is easy. Some people, you can't get them off the stage once they get on it. And that can be a problem. And that's a default problem with the Leo, with the Leo sign or the fifth stage. So it's learning in the fifth stage, it's learning about sharing the limelight with others. And as I wrote in my book, Leo is a stage where they think the world is finite. And it's not finite. And if you get a little bit of the attention, the world's not going to end. But to the human ego, the world is going to end. But I want all the attention. All of it. And if you want all of it, everybody's going to leave. <laughs> then you're going to get nothing. So you see in all these signs, you have to share and balance with the opposite sign. And Leo is a marvelous sign in terms of being generous expressive, warm, but they have to learn the world is not finite. If I share the limelight with so-and-so, it'll be all right, because eventually the limelight will come back to me. And that's healthier. Okay, now we're getting along with it, because you, as you get down through the zodiac, things get heavier and heavier. The sixth sign of Virgo can be a tough place tough place. The main reason it's tough is it's the last of the first six. And it's the sign right before the seventh. And the seventh is a big deal because the seventh on is me and us. The first six is me. So the Virgo is a tough sign because it has to do with the perfection of this self. The perfection of the self. Why is it so common with Virgos? I was talking to Liza about this tonight. Why is it so common, especially with Virgo males? They do not want any attention. Well, the main reason is because Leo wondered, wondered all of it, and they're reacting against it. That's the main reason. That's why this book is based as it is on one sign, one sign changing into the next. So the Virgos can actually go so far negating attention, refusing attention, refusing compliments, that people will stop giving them to you. And after a while, we really think about it. Negating attention is really another ego trip. That's what it really is. As our friends in The Course in Miracle, if you're breathing, it's an ego trip. <laughs> So in, in, in the Virgo state, they're trying to really be humble, 
take the attention off of me. Let's start thinking about me perfecting myself, me amongst others. They're not really good things. But I tell you, I deal with a lot of clients. My main client is Virgo females. Without a doubt. Lots of, not the males, Virgo females. Wonderful women, wonderful nurses, caring. And as I told you, when we got to the end of the book, we we changed the keywords to Virgo to caring and um, purity. Caring and purity. This is really true for Virgo. <laughs> Excuse me. So the, what's behind Virgo, they're obsessed with how well their work is going. I'm going to do that again like Vincent Price. <laughs> they're just obsessed with how their work is going. And if you're with the Virgo, you don't have to look through the whole chart. Just got right to the, right to the point. How's the work going? <laughs> That's all I want to talk about. Most cases, they want to talk about how well their work is, how are they seen as a worker, how good is their work, etc. Well, that's a real great thing, and that's why they're so good at it. But you got young Virgo children, you got young Virgo males, you had better get them started on dealing with emotions now. Because Virgo children, especially the males, are embarrassed by emotion. They're embarrassed by it. And this can go until they're 75. They've got to learn that the emotional repression is not valuable. Yeah, not being an emotional load on the family is good. Yeah, not being emotional... Braggart is good, but they got to start to learn to accept kudos, to accept uh, compliments. And they also have to learn, and this is really unnatural for Virgo, that your life is not just gauged upon how well you're doing at work. I had a guy two days ago I did a reading for, very pleasant areas. He had a lot of Virgo, I mean Virgo parent to one injury. And he was very depressed because he was 64. When I'm 64. And he felt that he had failed in life because he had not enough to show for it as far as career success. And they ended up talking to him at length and he was really into shamanism, the Kabbalah. He's really into tarot cards. And I made him see that you may be trying to please daddy, but you don't have to please daddy because daddy's really trying to please himself. You need to get straight with that chapter is over with. Stop judging yourself by how well you're doing with your work and start to transcend into other things. And that made him very happy. He started to, to feel released about it and did better. Now, now we're running into the next two signs, which are the two heaviest parts, two heaviest parts of the zodiac when you talk about personal stuff. And that's Libra and that's Scorpio. And that's because we are taught from ad finitum, get a partner. It got to go well. Don't get divorced. Stay married. Get a partner. Go talk to the priest. Get a partner. Go talk to the psychologist. How long have you been married? 60 years. Yay! 70 years. Yay! So what? So what? You're married 50, 60, 70 years. It's not a marathon. But this happens so much in astrology, where one of the most critical parts of all the zodiac is the seventh and eighth house, because that's where we learn to mix with others. 
and Linda Platt's not here. So I don't want to just pick on Teresa. So I'll wait till they're both here. They're both Libras. But the point is that when they're young, what it really is, is Libra is really impressed upon to be a social member. They want to be socially included as a good social member. And they think that they need this partner who's going to be really successful to line up with until they get older and they realize, well, I could do a lot of this by myself. I thought I had to have a partner, but I didn't necessarily have to. And what happens in the eighth house in Scorpio, which is about the emotional blending, the urge to merge, the eighth house, which is the blending of the two souls, the emotional accumulation of me plus you, and one plus one equals one million. So, so again, you see, and you when you see somebody, dear astrologers, when you see somebody's chart that's got a lot of seventh house and a lot of eighth house, then you got trouble. There's no doubt about it. Can it be solved? Yes. But they got to get their head out of the dimension of only when I have a great relationship that lasts forever, that has no bumps in it, will I be okay. And that is flat out wrong and dangerous. We've heard Teresa talk about it. We've heard Claudia talk about it. We've heard Linda P. talk about it and how they were hung up on those at particular times in their life until they got past it. And when you get past it, you tend to bring in relationships that are healthier. Before that, you, bring, you will always bring in relationships that are full of codependency. And it just won't work. So in seven and eight, it's really a big deal about codependency and dumping your junk because you become lost in the relationship and there's no longer a you there. There's nobody there. There's one non-self with another non-self. Well, they look nice. They kind of look nice, attractive looking couple. But what's really happening to the self that's developing or the other self that's developing? So that's the danger of seven and eight. Seven and eight are critical stages where we learn to socialize. We learn to have partners. It's very, very important. But we have to make sure that we get in our head. It's not the end all, be all. It's not. If your relationship fails, you will still be alive. This is why teenagers kill themselves when they have these early puppy loves and it goes bad. Just imagine the pain. We can't imagine how painful it is. We can all remember something about those days. We were all teenagers once. But anyhow, that's what that's all about. And it's a myth. This myth that you must find your other half. There is no other half. What was the word we, Rick we used yesterday? My my pair, my soul, my soulmate. Everybody wants a soulmate. Everybody's got a soulmate. Well, what or a if, twin flame. Twin flame. What if there is no soulmate? Now, I'm not here to say there is or there isn't, but I am here to say that if you got one and you're hung up on it, it must be real, real comfortable because he's my soulmate. Until it ain't your soulmate anymore, then you got big problems because you put all your life in their hands. That's the problem with soulmates. You put all your life in their hands. Instead of, let's just get along as two individuals and love each other and let's see how it goes. That's a healthier way of doing it. And it's very much what you see with Libra. 
and Scorpio as they age, they get past the midlife uh, turning point. They become much more living for themselves. Uh, but they're open to your relationship, but they're not dying in for Okay. That's a real critical part of Zodiac. So far in my mind, the really critical stages are two with self-worth, six with Virgo, and um, being afraid of emotion, seven and eight about relationships. These are the really critical stages in my opinion. Now you get to nine and you get to the final the final relationship sign of Sagittarius, there are three stages with relationship Libra, Scorpio, Sag. But in the, in the Sagittarian relationship sector, it's not about the one-on-one -on -one anymore. It's not about the one-on-one. -on -one. The Sagittarian is about transcending one-on-one, -on -one, and it's more one-on group, and group on one, and my country with your country, and uh, tra travel students, and exchange students, and you're on a much bigger dimension. Things usually get much healthier for you because you're not hung up on the one-on-one -on -one relationship as you once were. Now, if you're a Sag, and you got a bunch of Libra in you, and you got a bunch of Scorpio in you, then you got the same problem. So, Sag can be very, very good because the soul is expanding and growing, etc. The problem with Sag is, are you on a soapbox? Okay, do you ever climb down off of your soapbox? Do people get tired of hearing you on your soapbox? That's the problem with nine. And the answer is yes, they usually do. And I'm not going to give you a lot of examples because you've, you've already heard of many of them. Many people can do it just right in the ninth stage. John Stewart's a good example. A triple, triple sedge. He does it really well. He's on a soapbox, but he does it in a healthy way because he's sharing his knowledge with everybody else. Now, in the last three signs or steps of the zodiac, it gets uh, very tricky because you got Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, and you're into the last three, and the last three are about the self and beyond. The self and beyond to include the non-self. Ooh, that word is some strange terms. And you can see how the first nine signs of the zodiac are critical to work meshed together to make way for the growth in the 10, 11, and 12. Capricorn, taking your place amongst the business people, taking your place as the father of the zodiac. Capricorn is usually pretty good, uh, but its trap, its blockage, is it gets blocked in its position. Well, if I get this position, I'll be okay. That's why you never play. What is that gun? You shoot the gun, the gun with the balls in it, the glue balls. I forget what it's called. Paintball. Paintball. Never play paintball with a Capricorn. They'll destroy you because they know how to use the the statues, the blockages. They know how to hide behind the system. That's what Capricorns are expert at. Okay? Well, so they're experts. And so they walk out after the paintball game is over and they have no paint on them. So what? They're still alone. There's the problem. There's the problem with Capricorn. And that can be rather severe because Capricorn is all about doing what you're supposed to do, do the right thing, stay in your box. And if you're a Capricorn that has a tendency to now and then escape that box and come back like Marsha Bud and like I do, then you're going to be all right. So you need to be a Capricorn with some Sag, a Capricorn with some Aquarius. 
that allow you to get outside the box and come back. Okay? So it's not as bad uh, as some signs can be. Aquarius is not a sign. Uh, I'm trying to be very level-headed about it. Aquarius is not a sign that has too much trouble. Now, I'm not going to talk about every Aquarian I've ever known. In general, when I talk about the sign, I'm talking about the sign. I'm not talking about all people that you know. Aquarius is usually in pretty good shape because they don't get hung up on being nestled in with you. It's not the end of the world if you've had a fight in your relationship. It's not the end of the world if your relationship ends. They're known for not caring much anyway. Going through life lighthearted, traveling lightly. Well, what does that got to say with dumping your junk? They don't care much. So it's a very ideal sign in many, many ways. Where Aquarian can go wrong and where they can get into it is they can get into being junk free so far that they're full of junk because you're so junk free. <laughs> How do I explain that? Aquarian people have this almost neurotic fear of you putting your hands around their ankles. I'm talking about reality. Go up to an Aquarian, put your hand around their ankles. A friend of yours. You're going to see a natural, there's a natural reaction. They can't stand being held back, held down. Can't stand it. To a neurotic degree. I had two Aquarians, lovers, come to me once for a reading. And they were really having a rough time. And I had them each do that to each other. Put your hand around her ankle. Oh, I don't like that. Put your hand around his ankle. Oh, I don't like it. And I had to teach them, and it really was a teaching moment, that they're not here to hold you back. They can get close and intimate with you, and they still can be okay. And they really fell deeply in love, had a very good, strong marriage for quite a while, I think six, seven years, and then they eventually did fall apart. But the, the, the impetus to be Good friends is so strong in Aquarius that it naturally, you don't want somebody holding you down. I want to be friends. Okay. Well, when you want to be friends, where does that leave your heart? Because in everybody's heart, they want intimacy. So how can you have intimacy and want friends? It's a traditional question. So the trick there is, um, as Ramdas talks so brilliantly about it, you just get along as well as you get along. You get along as well as you can. And Aquarians are very true and they're very good friends. It's very real. But don't get up the next morning and just leave and not tell the person. My Aquarian girlfriend, long time ago, just left to move to New Orleans. I had no idea. We weren't fighting, we weren't having any trouble. I talked to her on the phone, she said, well, I felt just like leaving. Well, I said, well, I felt like I'm glad you're gone. How's that? In not a word, no respect at all. So it's the over fear of getting stuck. You cannot get stuck with another person because of something that they do. You can only get stuck if you hold on to something and refuse to let it go because there is no such thing as stuck. There's only holding on and letting go. So I remember in Chris, Chris for the Mill, the marvelous, marvelous second book by Ram Dass, he's talking to his guru about 
how he went through a teacher in Manhattan. And she was this Scorpio type of wise woman. And she had real strong power needs. And he really didn't feel good with her. And he was going back to his guru to figure out what he could do. And he was at this woman's feet. She, he was a disciple of this woman for a while. And he, he being an Aries, it was so afraid of getting stuck to this woman that he was in the relationship with her, but he was pulling back. He was in it, but he was pulling back. So he was never in it. And I'm talking about a teacher-client relationship, even that. How can I be in it when I'm not in it? And the teacher said, go back and fall in love with her and dive into her. Just unfettered, just dive in and let all of her go through you. This is really critical. Let all of her go through you and what's not real won't stick. So after a while, he picked up what he could for her. He saw that she was using him. She found out that she couldn't stick anywhere anyway because he, he left her nothing to grab onto, and he was freed. It's a beautiful story. I didn't, I didn't put it just right, but that's the story. He went back to her. He surrendered to her. He opened his heart to her. He heard her stuff. Her stuff went through it, and then it no longer attached anywhere and, and went away. Then she went back to trying to steal somebody else's stuff. So it's a beautiful story of how he didn't get stuck because he didn't worry about it. Okay. Now the 12th sign. <clears throat> oh, God. The 12th sign is just so, so difficult to talk about. And I... I keep running into Pisces, and it is kind of my expertise, Pisces. Um, because they're here, but they're not here. And that really makes it tough. Now, Pisces, their main, main issue is they want to escape. But the real true escape is they want to go back home. There's nothing wrong with that. Christ was very Piscean. He wanted to go back home. He didn't want to hang out with you guys. He wanted to be one with his father. So he talked about, I'm one with my father. I go to be with my father. Beautiful stuff. But if that escape becomes escapism through the bottle, through drugs, through going to jail, then you got a problem. And I'm going to repeat it to you again and again. And again, I do a lot of work. I do a lot of work with murderers, with criminals, and you will not believe how many of those people have tremendous Pisces energy. It's just unbelievable. And it's not because they're bad. It's not. It's because they are so unglued. They don't know. They don't have a center. They can't glue to something. That they find something to latch onto. At least that's something to latch onto. There's nobody like Pisces when they say, "I did something. I don't know why I did it." That's very Piscean. So the answer with Pisces is the toughest one of all. Is surrender. The answer to Pisces is surrender. And a lot of people just are so afraid of that word. And all surrender means is you trust. I give myself to you, God, whatever you will call him, and I know that I'll be okay because I trust you. If you've ever been around a really beautiful Pisces, you will see that. You will sense it. You will be able to almost touch it, but you can't touch it because they're untouchable. As you're saying this, I keep thinking of the song, Let It Be. Let It Be. Exactly. Exactly. Precisely right. Now, any question? I'm going to put a 
period at the end of that paragraph. Are there any questions anybody has about this sector? We're moving on to some other things. Anything you got to say? I'm going to throw something out there. I think there's a little bit of stress on the Virgo because all that development focus has been on the individual ego and they're prepping. How do I interact with the world? It's intimidating because they they've just gotten to step in and it's like i have to be perfect and then the the libra is the first one and it's like got to pair bond got to do this together and i think they get so caught up in the we of it all that's right that they lose the me that's exactly right it's exactly and right. The, Scorpio isn't far behind. No, that's precisely right. Yeah, and, and that's why the Sag is like, yeah, that didn't work. I, I'm yeah. in the road. Sag, I'm going there no more. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, that couldn't, I could not have said that better. <laughs> that was just perfectly said. Okay, I'm going to move on. Yes. To yes? It just occurred to me that not a single one of all 12 signs is perfect if you look at it. All right. Everybody's oh, no, there got is. something. Of course there isn't. That's why. You got to look at all 12. You got to put all 12 in one pie. Then you got it. Otherwise the filling falls out. I mean, Pisces comes close. Pisces can come close. But they usually don't because it's just too difficult to demands. But I have seen people, if you study long enough, you see people with a real nice blend throughout the chart, and they'll impress you. But another reason, you can't use the word per perfect. What do we have to go on when it comes to spiritual attainment? All we got to go on are the churches and their books. They're not going to tell you how to do it because you ain't allowed to anyway. Only the guy leading the mass is allowed to do it. You can't do it. He can do it. You sit down, kneel down, stand up. Thank you. That's well, the collective, God. That's the collective, God. Thank God. The collective of humanity keeps making the mistake of looking outward. That's right. And, and the key is to look inward. There's no doubt. That's exactly right. So uh, we're getting there. I mean, look look how much we've done just in this group in seven years. And look at look at look at the way the world was seven years ago, and how it is now. So we're doing the right things. We're on the right track. Our one of our big problems is we think if we let go of the church, we're going to die. We're going to go to hell, and not for sixty billion years, forever. Man, that's just. That's some really stress on the young child's brain. Oh, you're going to go forever. And then another billion after that. Then a quadrillion after that. I mean, a little kid. How can a, a young mind deal with that? Any other I mean, little mind. Rick? Yes. I just um, started thinking because of something that happened yesterday about Spinoza and his philosophies and you know he was talking about whether or not we survive whether our mind survives after death when the body dies and you know that whole business about forget it you know he was anti-worshipping the god and gods and all this kind of stuff and talking about looking internally but this conversation is just making me think of, about Spinoza's philosophy. Well, I think it's wonderful because you think about it. What do you what do you mean that he goes to Sunday worship? He's a good person. He goes to Sunday worship. Well, what is he worshiping? Well, he's worshiping God. Well, why is he worshiping God? Does God need worship? No. Why doesn't God need worship? Because God is all every. He is already everything. What are you doing? <laughs> You're projecting onto him. If I were God, I'd want to be worshipped. I'd want to be worshipped. 
And he also said that we're all okay because God created us the way we are. Yeah. So we shouldn't worry about it so much because God isn't worrying about it. Exactly right. And that's why when I do people's 12th harmonic, I tell them I do not expect to see you again. You're done. There's, in my opinion, there's no reason you need to take another lifetime. You don't have to come back to perfect yourself because there's nothing that needs perfected. I mean, that's just my opinion. And I know I could stir up a lot of junk with that one. Let me move on, please. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about a friend, a person I know. This person I know was so dominated by his partner that there was nobody there. And I saw a date coming three months ahead that I saw that that point in the chart their representative was going to really get targeted. And I said to him, look, you need to stand your ground with this other person. You can't just bend backwards every time this person kind of attacks you. You got to. And this person's way of dealing with the other person was when he got his feelings hurt. He would go in the kitchen and not talk. So the uh, passive aggressive. So when he got his healing, feelings hurt, go in the kitchen and not talk. That's real third grade, huh? <laughs> so I gave him a date three months ahead where I saw this coming to a head. I forget what it was. It was three months from now. And I told him to mark his calendar. I said, on that date, and by that date, because you can't scare people. I said, by that date, you're going to get stronger at this. And it could come to a point where you'll probably get better at standing your own ground. Right? I'm not trying to teach him to have a battle. Stand up for yourself. Three months later, plus one day, a car... He was at work, and a truck came off of the road, spinning out of control, through the wall of his business, and pinned him up against the wall. It didn't hurt him. There was the wall. There was his face. There was the truck, the photograph. If I had not talked to him, he would have been killed that day. Because there was a little bit of me that got through to him. It started to help. Because if there is no self, then inside what you want is you don't want a self. Because self is dangerous. Much safer to be a non-self. The truck, the guy had his foot has slipped off the brake or whatever it was. Gone through the wall of the business. Pinned him up against the opposite wall. And it was the wall... Him and his chair in the truck. But that's indicative of the main thing I want to talk to you about. It's not about doing the things you should. Is are you there? Are you present? Oh my, she's got such tough planets on her now. What does that mean? She's got tough planets. That means that for whatever reason, in your collective, in your karma, whatever, you have decided that it's time to make a really big move with powerful energies. And that's why we see that vision I give you of the shoots coming up through the room. If the shoots come that day. They don't come the day before. They come that day. And the shoots are powerful. And if you picture yourself riding on those shoots, then you do have a lot of planets on you at that time. But there's absolutely no reason to be afraid of it because they're just you. Now, if you're the opposite and you're fighting them, I don't want to get hit by these planets. What do you think is going to happen? Cosmo Magazine said, I'm going to get hit by a shitload of planets on Friday. Oh. Oh. What do you think is going to happen to your mind on Friday? You're going to think all this stuff is coming after you to come, come and get you. Because we're so far from nature. 
And nature is being in touch with your chart. Nature is these energies are coming up through me. I feel them and I will express them. The problem is when we don't express them. That's the blockages. When we, so the group won't like it if I express them. The group won't like it if I go to the movie with these people. The group, parents won't like it if I hang out with these people. That all has to go. All of that is the junk that's in the dump truck. Keeping my husband happy? Sorry. I do my best with you. But I have to take care of number one. And my number one is not about Rick. It's about Rick associating with the God that produced Rick. That's my opinion. So nevertheless, he got out of the experience after the one day. And I talked to him the following day. And he said, well, the truck was just going too fast. I said, okay. Never mind. I had a skiing accident in the 70s. And I really don't remember what happened, but I could have been killed. It was really lucky. I mean, I got hurt. And I could have been I could have been killed. And I didn't. And and I and I didn't know astrology at that time. I was just starting, but I wish I had written down. What was I doing the day before? What was I doing the week before, the month before? Because something went to kill me in the heart and it stopped. And that ain't nothing but a warning. That's what that is. That's the inner self warning itself. Look, I'm going to kill you if you keep this up. I'm going to destroy you if you keep this up because we just can't keep living this way. And unfortunately, I didn't have any list of what had gone on in that period. Uh, but I'm encouraging you, when you have something really bad happen to you, or your relatives, or something really good, stop them right there and say, what did you do yesterday? And use the symbol as your guidance. Okay. This guy I was dealing with the other day, he had an aneurysm, and he was an Aries. I said, boy, aneurysms, it's real common with Aries people in the head. He said, no, I got it in my heart. I said, oh, my God, you know. And after a while, I started thinking, what was going on then? You were, were attacking your own heart with something and stopping it, or you were trying to express your heart and you weren't allowing it, but in the story itself, it will tell you what the deeper meaning is. So think about your life. Think about falls. Think about getting slapped in the face. Think about car wrecks. Think about whatever it is. And you'll find in most cases, that you wanted to slap somebody in the face of yesterday, but you stopped them. So somebody slapped you the next day. It's just directly, directly related. But the planets are awful rough on her this weekend, aren't they? Oh, they're really rough. Oh, boy. I think another word for to help with uh, Aries is identity, because we think of it being in our mind. And the identity was not being expressed, as you say. Yes, and cared for. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. Now, I watched this video the other night of a, a murder that took place in Pittsburgh. It's the countrywide, but this murder happened to take place in Whitehall, which is near the Pittsburgh tunnels. And what happened in that murder, and I really like to study these because I really like to get the birth date of the people involved and see the dynamics. So what had happened was this lovely lady was giving money to this young man. She didn't know that he had a criminal record to cut the grass, 
to mow the lawn, to do little handyman things around the house. He had nobody in his life because he was a real jerk. So she treats him nicely. She's a nurse, so she knows all about charming and how that makes a big difference with your people, etc. And she did the number one thing wrong. Number one, don't throw anybody away. Don't expel somebody. Don't cut somebody off from the cash. Don't cut somebody off from your phone list. You're asking for murder. Is that simple? Two days later, she was dead. She cut him off. Two days later, he came and he snuck in her house and killed her. I'm going to keep it simple. That's all that happened. But what really happened? What really happened? And this goes right back to Ram Dass, and he's exactly right. What happened is when that man was with her and she was smiling at him, and she was accepting of him, he was in touch with his God part, the good part. And all his life he's had trash, just trashy reflections in his life. And then when she throws him out, I'm not feeding you again, I'm not paying you, I'm not hiring you, that is when the other self comes up and says, oh my God, and it looks like she did something to him. She didn't do anything, did He was left with what was there. With what was there in reality. And of course, he ends up going to prison. Yes, Erica. Rick, I have a question about, you know, a situation like that. So let's say that somebody is friends with someone who just starts attacking what they're saying right and then attacking their friends on social media right and so they decide to cut that person off now you're not talking about that sort of thing but now it's well, going to come that's back a diff to them, that's right? a really difficult one cuz i, I want to get let's put that on pause for a minute cuz i want to give i want to interject this other story and we'll get back to that cuz i think they're related i had a woman I had a woman come to me, and I have been consciously helping raise her three daughters ever since they were born, because the woman didn't have any money, and I would do their charts, and the woman was really heavy into astrology. Well, the one woman, one of the young daughters, grew up, and I told you this a few months ago, and I told you this. She married, she had a kid, and married a guy from the Middle East. And they fell apart. The relationship fell apart, like good American relationships do. They fell apart. And she said, I'm going to keep the kid. And he says, you, no, 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 no. I'm a Middle Eastern male. I'm taking the kid. He's mine. He's male. And we're going back to Iran. She says, no, 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 no. And he tells her flat out, if she tries to, he will kill her. Listen to these details. So the mom calls me, knows that I've been astrologically involved with the daughter for a long time, and I gave her a response that she wasn't ready for. She's asking me the wrong question. Is he going to hurt her? Is he going to hurt her? There is no him. There's nothing outside of you. Looks like it. This is all what she's deciding to do to herself. That's why she got in so much trouble with this guy. I said, you tell her to, to quit worrying about it. And all she's got to do is go into a meditation a couple times a day or whatever and decide that she does not deserve to be hurt. Talk with her God. I don't deserve it. I will not have it. It is not right. It's not fair. I won't have it. So she calls me back like a month later, and things are going like this, you know, like they're getting kind of better, but they're worse than they're, you know, their things aren't good. And I said, 
well, is he going to hurt her? Is he going to hurt her? Is he? I say, you're not listening to me. This has got nothing to do with him. It's what I was telling Susan the other night. You were asking me in your message about this offer you had with your art. It's got nothing to do with the other people. Nothing. I said, it's all inside. It's all up to you. So I finally got through to the girl. And she finally just dumped him. That's what you call dumping your stuff. She finally de decided inside, I don't deserve this. I will not be hurt. The next day or so, the guy calls, I'm going back uh, to see my family. I'm going to come back and buy a house near you. And we're going to co co-raise this child. And that's how fast it happens. It's instant. I guarantee you it's from what decision she made inside of herself. And I guarantee you that she has stayed on the same route, which was I do deserve to be hurt by others, that she would have come closer and closer to being hurt. Now, does that make sense with your question? See, when you have these other people, let's say these other people are calling you names or getting on um, social media and they're saying bad things about you. Let's go from there. They're not saying bad things about me, but they're criticizing um, inspiring things that I put up and they're saying that it's all BS. And then when other friends of mine that are closer friends defend it they attack them and call them names well you're <laughs> when, when your friends defend you against this third party the third party calls them names they're defending okay let me give you the example so i put an article up about judith dench the actress right who said that she's so happy that she's never had plastic surgery and that she's proud of her wrinkles and her face and everything. And I just thought her article was marvelous and accepting of aging and you right. Know, right. respectful and honorable of aging. So this person that I know wrote, BS, she's had all kinds of facelifts, it's Hollywood, don't believe it, it's nonsense. So my friend said, no, it's true, she's never had facelifts. And then this other person told her that she was an idiot and she's stupid and was going on okay. and on. First, and first of all, first of all, what's happening is the, the uh, nasty friend has got fights going on in her mind oh yeah about everything all the about time. everything in other words that, per that person who still called them the third party that person could never get away with plastic surgery and be okay or non-plastic surgery and be okay there's nothing that they could ever do that would be satisfactory so you have to first realize this ain't got anything to do with her secondly we have to talk about why are you being impacted I don't want my friends attacked on my own page, which is my own page. All if right. they want to well, go talk about this stuff, well, they can what do I'm telling own you, well, what I'm telling you, there is nobody out there except you. Well, I don't like it because... You don't like what? I... They're not I don't like that this person... They're not, they're not even there. Erica. They are, but they aren't. Yeah, well, I understand that. You know, now, in your mind, in your mind, if you could just make peace with all three parties here, picture a triangle in your mind and make peace with all three parties, this whole thing will go away. Well, I tried to accept this person a long time ago because I try to allow people to be themselves. 
but sometimes it becomes a little much, you know, when they start attacking other people or being hurtful to me. So I just feel like Pe we need people, to have boundaries. Pe people cannot be attacked. It's not possible. It's not possible to be attacked. It's only possible to attack yourself. And that's what's confused here. I think, too. No, no, no amount of millions would give that person enough plastic surgery to That's ever right. be happy. That's right. The but third nobody, party person. The vulnerability here is you attacking yourself. We're not and there's also person. the idea of cutting off the person who is That's right. not willing That's to right. accept love and acceptance. That's because exactly some people right. don't have friends because they don't accept them they don't accept themselves let's yeah. see we're not we're this not there is angry all the time we're not uh -huh. claims we're, and claims time to out be. renate has something to say okay <laughs> sorry we'll come back take your mute off renate you're still muted okay Honey, I attacked myself today in form. I was parking and then a man in a big car rolled down and said, are you parking like this? And I said, yes. And then he started, you fucking bitch, you fucking idiot. You <laughs> and I just smiled at him. I said, I love you and you bitch. You <laughs> and then I said, how often did I think that idiot is driving like that, or oh, that bitch is not stopping. In so that, I got it, and I looked up the astrological, I had a sun Pluto opposition, so I had to go with that. You yeah. know, I just, I, I sat in my car and I laughed about it because it's it's myself showing out in form of this guy, you know? <laughs> That's exactly right. And this ain't got nothing to do with you. This is this yeah. guy fighting inside his own head. <laughs> Yeah, it was really funny. Well, I like I like the clarity of your story. <laughs> yes, Thank Susan, you know, good hand. Very good, yeah. Renate. Susan? We've all had similar experiences to Erica's, and when it has happened to me in the past, I have posted in response, you may not do this on my page. Okay. And they said one more thing. I blocked them. That was the yeah, end of that. What does that do? All that does is verify. All that does. All that does is verify that they're out there. That's okay. I don't care. They may not harm anybody on my page. They may no, not. That doesn't solve the problem. I'll go in the kitchen and I'll close my mouth. It doesn't solve the problem. The problem's in here, not out there. All you got to do is say to yourself, um, "I do not deserve this kind of abuse from this person." Inwardly, and it'll stop. I do not deserve this kind of abuse from this person. And it will stop. That's the cause. The cause is in your own head. It ain't out there. And it's in their own head. So these people, they're there, but they're not there. So it is confusing. Claudia? I'm pointing at you, Claudia. I know. <laughs> I'm just... I just happen to see you sit there. And I know you got lots of ideas, and I thought I would. I don't know that I have many right now. I'm not feeling very well. Oh. And I was just looking up symptoms of a heart attack. Oh, please. I know, I know. It sounds crazy, but this afternoon I started to get this. Uh, it's just like in my back and my. All right, body. wait, 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 wait. We're going to stop the show right now. Time it, and I'm going to look at your chart because you don't fool with this stuff. Hold on, please. Well. Uh, okay, we had a long reading with um, Claudia about some personal issues. Uh, I want to thank everybody that was with us tonight. Pardon me for ending the show abruptly, but that's just the way things happen sometimes. We all love Claudia, and I think it, as we go to screen dark, <laughs> we're all going to clap for Claudia because we all love her. We love you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>